Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make this kitchen storage unit. And I've made this for my own doll's house kitchen as a standalone unit. The cutting list is in the description box below and coming up next is a list of all the tools and materials you'll need. Then we'll get started. We're going to begin by attaching the mouldings to the side pieces. So take one of the side pieces and start by making a pencil mark at the top and bottom of the piece, 19 millimetres or three quarters of an inch from the left hand edge. Turn the piece onto its side and join up those marks. Have the rule just below the pencil marks to allow for the thickness of your pencil. That. And then I've got some glue here dispensed onto a piece of card and I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it and begin by applying it to the wider of the moulding, so the top moulding. And then place that along the top of the side piece so that you've got a nice flush edge along there so that the pieces a level and what you can actually do is bring in your spare piece 5x5 five five strip and just lay that along the top there and push both pieces up to it. Then press that down, remove any excess glue with a clean cocktail stick and then bring in your vertical moulding And this will sit just to the right of that pencil line. And I like to place it so it's just hiding the pencil line. And then there's no need to have to sand that off before painting. Press it into place. Again, remove any excess glue. And then you can attach the remaining moulding along the bottom edge. Again, making sure you've got a nice flush edge along the bottom of the pieces. And then, as you can see, where the glue is starting to dry, already the wood is beginning to lift up. So it's always important to secure mouldings in place. And to do that, I'm using these clothes pegs. I always like to fit on as many pegs as I can and then that piece can be left to dry and then do the same with your remaining side piece. The back piece is prepared in exactly the same way but we're going to make our pencil marks 30 millimetres or 1 and 3 sixteenths of an inch from the left hand edge. We'll mark at the top and the bottom Join them up. And again, begin by attaching the top wider moulding. Again, place it along that top edge. So you've got a nice flush edge there. I'm just going to bring that spare piece of strip in again longer piece. Press both pieces up towards it and you know you've got that nice flush edge. Again the vertical moulding sits just to the right of that line so that you're hiding the line. glue and finally the bottom moulding. 
and I always like to check that I'm um, gluing it down so the nicer edge of the wood is visible. So if you've got any sort of little nicks or bumps out of one side of the wood then always glue that side down. Make sure that's straight along there. And then I'm going to bring in my clothes pegs again and peg that all down. A couple along that top edge, seeing as it's a wider piece. A couple more in there. I always like to get on as many as I can. And again, that piece can be left to dry. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, sand along each edge of each piece and just go along the sandpaper in one direction. Don't sort of sand it back and forth like that as you'll round off the corners. And I've already done these pieces and then we're going to attach a leg to each side of each side piece. So apply glue to the edges of each side piece. Put that down on your work surface and then you want to attach the legs so that the tops of each piece are flush. So make sure you've got a nice straight line along that top edge there and you can use one of your other legs just to help with that and push everything up to the leg and then you can also push those legs in and make sure that the side piece is pressed flat against your work surface otherwise the legs sort of tend to curl inwards or angle themselves inwards so press that all together remove your excess glue piece can just be carefully slid along your worktop and left to dry. And then do the same with the remaining piece and you'll need to bring in a couple of um, spare pieces of strip wood just to help with pushing all of that together. So whilst your side pieces are drying bring in your back piece and place it moulding side down and we're going to do a pencil line 32 millimetres from the left hand edge and that is 1 and 17 64ths of an inch so begin by making a little pencil mark 32 millimeters 1 and 17 64ths of an inch from the left hand edge and then turn and join those up placing the ruler just below the pencil lines to allow for the thickness of your pencil nib like that so making sure you've got the um, wider moulding at the top, that's the top of the piece, and then 32mm from that edge. And then we're going to do a line 21mm from the top edge going all the way across. So turn it again, little pencil mark there, 21mm and that's 53 sixty-fourths of an inch. Join those up and then where we're having our shelf on this side of the unit we're going to do a line just across in this section and that will be 41 millimeters from the top which is 1 and 39 60 fourths of an inch so again do your little pencil mark there and then along that sort of line more or less in the center there and join those up. Put that to one side again and then once your side pieces are dry bring those in and we're going to do the same line on each of them 21 millimeters from the top 53 60 fourths of an inch and when I'm marking up the side pieces I don't do the pencil line onto the leg I just do it on that actual side piece so on that central panel and it's just that when the um, pieces are constructed it's very difficult to erase the pencil mark on the back leg once the back piece is sitting glued there so just do the line across the middle piece there and then take the second of those side pieces and we're going to do 
two lines, 21 millimetres and 41 millimetres, and this will then become the left hand side piece where we'll be attaching that shelf. So 21 and 41 millimetres, 53 sixty-fourths of an inch, and 1 and 39 sixty-fourths. Again, join those up. And that will be your left hand side piece. So now bring in your top and bottom pieces and again we're going to do that pencil line 32 millimeters from the left hand edge on each of them. And that was 1 and 17 64ths of an inch. So again do your little um, pencil mark top and bottom of the piece. Join that up and then continue the line onto the front and back edge the piece and that will just help when we come to place that internal divide and then because there'll be a slight difference now between these two because we're not exactly in the center with this line just do a little L on that side so you know that that's the left hand side and when we come to attach that that will sit there like that otherwise the line won't um, line up once it's in place and do the same on this one and then the side that we're doing the line on will be on the inside edge of the unit as well. But I'll remind you of that when we get there. And again onto the front and back edge and then put your L on that left hand side. And we're now ready for construction. We're going to begin by attaching the back piece to the leg of the side piece that has the two pencil lines on it and the back piece will sit towards the front edge of that back leg so right along the join of those two pieces but I'll attach it and then I'll turn it and show you what I mean. So we'll apply glue to that side of the back piece like that. and then put it into position so that the top of each piece is flush and those lines will also join up nicely. Press it down. Need to push that up a tiny amount. Hold it into place for a moment while your glue begins to take. And I'm just going to use a spare cocktail stick to remove the excess glue. I always remove it along that inside edge as well because once it's dry it can sort of create a hard line and you may not be able to push your shelf pieces right back into the corner. So even though it won't be seen, do always remove any sort of excess glue like that. And then I think that's dry enough now for me to show you how that sits against that back leg. So we're right at the front edge of the back leg so you've got that overhanging lip at the back the same as we have at the side there. Okay leave that on its side and then bring in your shelf piece. I called that a top piece um, earlier. I said the top and bottom pieces but it is actually the shelf piece. It doesn't sit at the top of the unit. It will sit here just below that first line that we made and you want your so that your, the piece where you put your L is on the left hand side so that will go there. So we'll apply glue to that edge and the back edge. Like that. And then get your side piece lined up first so it's sitting just under that line. So you're just sort of hiding the pencil line with the edge of the piece there. Press it down and then you can pull the back piece in to meet it, making sure you're still underneath that line and that will square the whole thing off. Make sure you're pushed right into that corner. Press it all together. OK, 
again, remove your excess glue and then bring in your short shelf piece and again this is going to sit just below that next pencil line so apply glue to one long and one short edge I might just have to turn this away from you for a moment so I'm just lining up the long edge with that shelf on the sorry the line on the side piece and then you can press the back piece into place making sure you're sitting below that line like that I'll just push that up a little bit and while the glue is sort of drying you can you've still got time to move things about so always sort of look and check that things are straight and in the right place you can just sort of jiggle them about a little bit before the glue begins to set there like that and then take the internal divide and this will be sitting along there and the idea is that it's on the other side or the right hand side of that line we did from the 32 millimeters from the left hand side and that little line that we continued onto the front of that shelf will help us to position the top of this internal divide so begin by applying glue along the edge of the shelf it's important that you remember that otherwise there will be sort of gapping in there and then apply your glue to the top and back of the divide like that and then just pop that into place you just lay that on there and then if you turn your piece back onto the back edge like that you can see the pencil line in there and then you can line it up and then before the glue has a chance to dry just bring in your smaller rule if you measure from the top of that shelf piece to the bottom of the short shelf take the measurement and then come over here and make sure that it's in the same position and that's actually about half a millimeter lower so I'm going to just pop that up a bit hold on to it and then re-measure so you really want the same distance between the two so just sort of jiggle it about that's right, that's where I want it there. Once it's where you want it, press it into place. And you can also press the divide up against that shelf piece, making sure it's sitting right into that corner. And it should be sitting to the right hand side of that pencil line in there as well. Like I've used both cocktail sticks for applying glue now, so I'll just grab a clean one. Move the excess glue from inside. Now I wanted a sort of clear area on the right hand side um, of my unit for displaying. I want to be able to sort of stand some taller items in there. But if you wanted to do um, four smaller shelves, you might want to have four baskets instead of the two. Or you might just want another couple of shelves this side to display some smaller items. Then you can just put another shelf in and you would just um, then continue the pencil line across and do both pencil lines on both side pieces so it's really up to you, you can alter the design to suit your own taste I like having um, different size display areas in the kitchen so you can get lots of different items in and I'm already thinking about maybe making a wooden tray and having that stood under there maybe some taller cookbooks and things like that just to really add a lot of interesting areas in the kitchen so press that all into place we're now going to attach the bottom piece and the um, pencil markings will go on the inside and that's going to sit just at the bottom there on the inside edge of the joined pieces 
So again, apply glue to the bottom of that divide. And then to the left hand edge and the back edge of your bottom piece. into place make sure again that it's sitting right into that corner and then the little line that we did on the front edge there you can use to make sure the divide is staying where it should I'm just carefully pressing everything together till the glue begins to take and then turn it onto its side and we're going to attach the remaining side piece. So apply glue along each of these exposed ends. And then lay the remaining side into place. So you want to make sure again that the back piece is sat towards the front edge of the back leg. You should have a nice flush area along the front. And then the bottom piece should be flush with the bottom of the side piece. So again, keep manoeuvring all the parts into position before the glue has a chance to take. You can see it taking shape now. I really like that already. A really nice, lovely, sort of compact piece of furniture. As I looked at it from the front there, I can see that that shelf's not quite in the right place. I'm just going to move that around a little bit. It's better. That's squared it off a bit now. So press it all together, and then I'm going to just grab some masking tape. I'm going to put a piece straight over the side like that. Pull it nice and tight. another piece along that bottom edge. I think I'll just put a piece over that directly over the side and onto the bottom edge as well. And just pull it tight so that you split the tape on the side there. And that piece can then be left to dry. And don't worry we have got our draw divide still to go and we'll attach that once this piece is completely dry. Just pop that there for safekeeping. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, we can attach the draw divide and that will sit again just to the right of that pencil line and level with the internal divide below. So apply glue to the short and one long edge. make sure it's pushed right into that back corner. So press that into place and then you can just look from the front and just make sure that you're in line with the divide below and if not like I'm doing here just sort of very carefully maneuver it into position and you want to make sure it's sitting upright as well. Remove your excess glue again and we'll just leave that piece to dry for a moment and then we can get on with making the drawers. We're now going to construct the drawers, but as with all of my tutorials where drawers are included, I always advise you to cut the drawers after construction of this main unit. And that's just so that you can re-measure the openings and then size your drawers more accurately. So I have given measurements in the cutting list, but that is to be used as a guide only. So always construct this piece, measure height, width and depth, and then you just want to deduct half a millimetre, if that, from your um, height and width of your drawer front and back pieces. And that will just help the drawer to slide in and out more smoothly. And then I've advised a measurement of 25 millimetres for the depth of the drawer, one inch. Now obviously that isn't going to reach to the back of the unit, but like we did with the um, 
kitchen base unit if you saw that tutorial we're going to put a little drawer stop in at the back here to stop the drawer from going all the way back but if you want to make your drawers that long then obviously measure all the way back for your depth and if you're doing that you want to bear in mind as well that we're going to have a moulding on the front of the drawer which will add to that depth so just deduct that from the overall depth before constructing the drawer and I hope that makes sense how I've explained it like that and then to construct the drawer begin by applying glue along each edge of the base piece so the shorter edges in this case and then attach the side pieces and you want to make sure you've got a nice flush join along the front and back along there and there it's got a nice um, straight or flat edge for our front and back pieces and I'm just pressing those together and what you can do there is bring in a couple of pieces of spare um, strip wood doesn't matter what thickness it is and then you can use those to push those side pieces against the base like that and then just push that to one side if you pick it up it might fall apart so just gently sort of slide it along your worktop and then that can be left to dry for a moment and then when it's dried enough that you can handle it again apply glue along the front and back edges pop that back down and then you can attach the front and back pieces making sure you've got a straight edge along each side there so pull the side pieces in to meet those edges of the front and back pieces otherwise you'll find your drawer won't go back into the opening press it all together and you should then have a nice square box and again that piece can be left to dry and you can complete the other drawer. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, try the drawers in place and you should just have a nice smooth fit. If not, you may just need to sand them and just sand a little bit at a time and then try them again and sand a little bit more if you need to. And we're now going to fit the moulding. So I've got here some 0.8mm sheet, that's 132nd of an inch, which I've cut into 3mm wide strips or 1 8th of an inch wide strips. And just before we fit them, if you've um, sort of sanded away a little bit too much on your drawers or maybe you've got a little bit of gap in, you can use the mouldings to cover those up. So I always like to put the top into place as well and just make sure that I've got a nice line along that top edge without too much gap in and there's maybe a little bit of um, gap in on that left hand drawer just at the top there just on the right hand side of the drawer so I've obviously sanded a little bit too much along one side so I can use the moulding then to cover that up so that I've just got a nice hairline gap between the drawer and the worktop. So when you're fitting your mouldings just have a think about that. Okay so I haven't given exact measurements in the cutting list for the mouldings and that's because it's so much easier to cut them against the drawer once it's constructed. So once you've sanded your drawer and you've got a perfect fit take note of any bits you need to cover up like we just spoke about and then begin by laying the strip along the top of the drawer first so you've got a nice flush edge at that side and then we're not trying to cut through at this stage but you just want to use your craft knife to make a little score along that right hand edge or left hand edge depending on which handed you are so just make a little score like that remove it from the drawer and then you can cut through it that will be your top moulding put that to one side do the same along the bottom edge like that 
and then you can glue those into place. The glue's gone a little bit dry there. one into place first and then before the glue has a chance to set I just want to try that in place and find out where I need to position it to cover up that little bit of a gap I had at the top there. So while the drawer's in place I'm just going to push the moulding up a little bit and make sure that your drawer's sitting where it should. I'm actually just going to move it over to the left a little bit as well. So once you're happy you've got it sitting in the right place you can then remove the drawer holding onto your moulding and press the moulding into place. You can then fit your bottom moulding. Do the same thing again if you had a little bit of gap in at the bottom that you need to cover. Again, I'm just going to try that in place. Make sure I've now got a perfect fit in there. Yeah, and I'm happy now with how that drawer is looking at the top and bottom there. I can then bring that out, press those pieces into place and then I can cut the mouldings to go along the sides. So you might want to leave the top and bottom mouldings to dry a little bit before you do this because you don't want to push them out of place. But just for the sake of the video I'm going to sort of hurry along with it. So just line it up with that top moulding, make your score again level with the bottom moulding and then cut. Same again on the other side. Like that. And I always just double check these ones. Make sure you've got a nice tight fit in there. Again with no gap in at the top and bottom. And then you can glue them into place. So, a little bit pernickety. Maybe you might think it's a bit of a long-winded way of doing it, but you do get a really nice fit in drawer by doing it this way. And again, you can cover up gap in at the sides as well if you've sanded a little bit too heavily along the sides. You just put your drawer back into position and position the moulding before the glue has time to dry. And then don't forget to use your spare cocktail stick to remove any excess glue. And it's much easier to do this while it's tacky because it's difficult to get in there then to sand once you've attached those mouldings. That's the first drawer and then you can do your remaining drawer. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry on the mouldings, you can sand the drawers face down on your sandpaper in small circular motions like that, and I've done these two. And now we're going to make a little drawer stop to go at the back of each one so that they don't sort of push back like that. If you've done the drawers to the full depth of the unit, then you can skip this part. So put the drawers into place and make sure they're flush against the front of the unit. And then take your roll, and I like to use my smaller one for this, and just measure the area that you've got at the back. So you would just measure from the back of the drawer, hold it in place with your finger so you know it's flush against the front, and then just measure the gap at the back there. And then I like to use a 2.5mm thick um, wood for the stops. Any thinner in the drawer can still sort of lift up and go above them. So you can use 2.5 or 3mm or whatever you've got lots of spare bits of. 
And once you've cut it to size, you can just pop it into place there and just double check that it's exactly right. So the drawer should sit nice and flush along the front and then you can glue that into place. So push that right to the back of the drawer and it doesn't matter what um, width the drawer stop is just as long as it fits nicely in the drawer opening there. Put your finger underneath the shelf to support it while you're pressing that into place. And then just remove the excess glue and don't put your drawer straight back in as you might find that it sticks to that little bit of glue at the back there. So pop that to one side and then do the same with the remaining drawer. If you've been following my kitchen furniture tutorials, you'll know that I usually use a black drawer pull for the units. Um, but for this standalone unit, I'm going to use a wooden drawer knob. And these are 2.5 millimeter in diameter. Just take a couple of those out of there. And the reason for that is just that I want to break up that run of um, black drawer pulls going along that right hand wall just to make it look a little bit different. So I've got here a mini drill with a 1.6 millimeter drill bit in there and I'm just going to drill a hole right in the center of the drawer. So begin by measuring across the drawer to find the centre and then do a little pencil line very lightly just going upwards like that so that marks the centre horizontally and then find your centre vertically like that and then you can just do a little dot and then I usually erase the line that I've done and that will just leave your little dot where you need to drill your hole and I always just erase the line just because once you've painted it or even put the um, draw knob in place it's very difficult then to get in there with sandpaper or an eraser and if you're using a pale coloured paint which I am that will be visible so support your draw with your finger and drill through and I always just like to jiggle it about a bit just because the stem of the draw knob is a little bit wider than my sort of thickest um, drill bit. You can then check that they do fit. And if you need to make a slightly bigger hole, I sort of sometimes use a cocktail stick and you can just poke that through. I'm twisting it as I sort of poke it in there like that and then try again. And that's a nice tight fit, but I'm still going to apply a little um, dab of glue just inside the hole, just to hold that nicely in place. Press that in so it's nice and flat against the front of the drawer. And again, you can use your spare cocktail stick just to remove the excess glue. And then do the same with your remaining drawer. Okay, so your unit and drawers are now ready to paint. And I tend not to paint inside the drawer openings, although I will do a little bit just around the sort of front edges just so when the drawer's in place there's no bare wood showing through and I will be painting inside these areas and inside the opening there. Okay so my unit has had two coats of paint and I sanded in between coats and then I've just given it a final gentle sand all over. The, make sure the drawers are going back in nice and smoothly and you may need to sand a little bit from the sides of those um, just to take away some of that paint if they're a little bit tight. We're now going to prepare the unit top 
for wood dye or um, varnish if that's what you're going to use. And I like to just round off the front edge and the side edges just at the top um, of the piece. So hold the piece in your hand, have a piece of fine grade sandpaper and just go along at a 45 degree angle and it just takes away that sharp edge but you're not taken away from the width of the piece of wood. And I think it just makes for a nicer finish than just a square straight edge. So you want to do it gently like that, a few times along the wood. Do that at each side. along the front edge as well and then give the piece a really good sand all over to prepare it for wood dye. I then dust that off with a soft brush, I'll we'll just get the unit out of the way, get rid of all the dust and then once the unit top is in place, I'll show you I turn the unit upside down. You can still see um, around the edges and at the sides there where we've got that sort of overhang. So, so that you can paint obviously the top of the piece and around the edges of the underside, I just make a little handle using masking tape. And just stick that on there like that, loop it around so you've got something to hold on to. And then I just put an extra couple of little pieces on just to hold it into place. And then you're able to use that to hold it while you apply the wood dye or varnish. And you can easily go around the outside edge and you won't get anything on your fingers. And it can also be used as a little prop once you've done the piece to leave it to dry. So for my top I'm using wood dye and again I'm going to do two coats of light oak and then one coat of dark oak which I shall remove with kitchen towel straight away as soon as I've applied it and that then gives me the colour that I need to match my other kitchen units. Okay so I've applied wood dye to the unit top and whilst that's drying, I'm going to make up the baskets. And these are made in exactly the same way um, as the drawers. Once you've allowed enough time for the baskets to dry, you can just gently sand them on all edges, top and bottom. And we're now going to make up the sort of basket part. And for the main part of the basket, I'm using this Hessian fabric. I've got a small square there. And then for the fabric part, I'm using this red gingham. And then for the little bow, I'm just using a cream coloured linen embroidery floss. Okay, so you want to begin by cutting the hessian to size. So with a straight edge along the top, just take one of your baskets and leave about a five millimeter or quarter of an inch border at one edge. And then just roll your basket along there like that. And then make a little mark at the other end. Again, just leaving a little border, just so we've got a bit of fabric overhanging. And then you can cut it to size lengthways. And both baskets will be the same measurement lengthwise. For the height of the fabric, you want to leave again about a quarter of an inch at the top of your bigger basket and probably about four millimetres at the top of your smaller basket. But you don't have to measure, just leave a slight border like that. And then you want enough fabric to wrap underneath 
to about halfway. So hold it on there like that. Make the little snip and with this hessian you can see the lines in it so you can just cut along a line. If you're using something that hasn't got natural lines in it then just make the measurement, measure at the other end, draw a line and cut along. Like that. So I'll just show you now I've actually cut it so this will wrap around the basket like that leaving a border at the top and then we'll be folding it underneath so you want it so it folds into the middle of your basket but it will look a lot neater than that when we've done it so have some glue ready and apply glue around that bottom part of your basket Again, you don't have to be exact with the border you're leaving at the top there. And then you want to apply it to the bottom of the basket as well. And then, so that the centre is across what will become the front of your basket, Lay your fabric into place. Shape it around, keeping it nice and tight. And you might find that the glue seeps through this hessian type fabric, but that's okay because it will just dry clear. And then you can apply a little bit more glue to the join there. Press that down as well, hold it together, crease the corners in, and then take your scissors and cut along each corner up to the base of the basket. And then fold in the sides first. You might need to apply a little bit more glue to the base. Fold the other side in. Just put a bit more glue on my card and a bit more glue to the base and you can fold in the back and the front. Make sure you've got nice neat corners at the front. If it's sort of sticking up a little bit Use your cocktail stick to get a little bit of glue in under that flap. I was trying to lift it up to show you, but it's, yeah, like that. You can put a little bit more glue in there and make sure you press that down and that will give you a nice, neat front edge along the bottom. I've got a bit of an overhanging flap there at the back, so I'm going to trim that off. The other side's okay. And don't worry about this line along here if it doesn't look even because we're going to be covering that with the coloured fabric. And then you can do the same with the remaining basket. So for the sizing of your patterned fabric. Again we're going to sort of move the box along the fabric like that so leave a bit of a border, walk it along like that, a little border at the other end as well and you can cut that to size for both baskets. 
and then for the height of that take the height of your basket and add 10 millimeters or 3 eighths of an inch so I know I'll need one at 25 and one at 28 and that's one inch and one inch and one eighth or one and an eighth of an inch Again, if you're using a checked fabric or something, you can just follow the lines on there. Makes it easier. And don't worry if your fabric's a little bit crumpled, as mine is, a little bit creased. Because as you sort of glue it down and stretch it tight, the creases will come out. So no need to iron it for this project. Okay. So we're going to begin by gluing over a hem, so you just want to do about 3mm or 1 8 of an inch. Fold it over and crease it in first. Do that on both pieces of fabric. And again, I'm not measuring, I'm just doing that by eye. And again, you can use a sort of fabric glue for this, or I'm just going to use my Gorilla Wood Glue, which works really well on fabric. Which I'll just leave that to dry just for a moment. And by doing that, just letting it dry off for 30 seconds to a minute, it actually prevents the glue from seeping through the fabric. And then glue that down. Pressing that down firmly, but take it off of your card because I've had that before where I've been working on card and then when I've lifted up the um, fabric there's been some card stuck to it. So I'll just pop that over there. Same with the other piece. They can then be left to dry for a moment. Once you've allowed enough time for the fabric to dry, we're going to create our bow. And I've actually changed my mind on the embroidery colour. I'm going to go for this sort of buff brown colour, which matches the hessian better. So cut a piece sort of wrist to elbow length and single thread. And then fold your fabric in half to find the middle. And just pinch it in like that. And then thread the needle through probably a millimeter, millimeter and a half from the top. So that you've got half each side and then we can tie a bow. So make your knot. My fingers are covered in glue. <laughs> And then begin to tie your bow. Just make it as small as you can, like that. And then hold it onto the knot. You want to shorten the bows, like that. And then tighten again. Hold the knot again shorten again and this is just a way of getting a really small bow like that until you're happy that you've got a nice small bow on there and again hold on to it and then you can trim off the ties just a couple of millimetres below the bottom of the fabric like that. And then I also just use a little bit of glue to secure the bow into place. And sometimes they tend to sort of twist onto their side. So a tiny little bit of glue on the back of the bow. And then press that down 
so that it's sort of nicely evenly placed. This is where I normally remove my thumb and the bow comes with it. And you can use a um, cocktail stick to manoeuvre it into position. Like that. And then do the same on the other piece of fabric. Like that. And then take your first basket and apply glue around that top edge and you can just slightly overlap the top of the hessian and then also apply glue to the inside edges of the basket spread it around evenly And then, so that you've got the front of the basket facing you, place the bow so it's in the middle, and so that you're just overlapping the top of the hessian. Press it down, hold it into place, and sort of work it all around the basket, keeping it level. The side as well. Just need a little bit more glue again on my card. So apply glue again to that flap. the edges together and then you can press in the side pieces and folding in the front and the back at the same time press it all down inside against the sides of the box with your finger Get it as neat inside as you can. Pop that one to dry. You can do your other basket. And then finally, you just want to cut a square of fabric to line the bottom of your basket. So just lay it over the opening like that. Cut it to size. And again, the surface area of the base of the both baskets is the same. So you can just cut two pieces the same. Like that. And then I like to use tweezers to put those into position. Hold on to them like that. Apply glue. And then just place that in the bottom of the basket. Use the tweezers to press it into position. And you can get your finger in there as well. Push it into those corners. So just a really simple little way of making a storage basket and you could use any sort of um, embroidery fabric or um, I think it's called Ada for the for where I've used Hessian. Anything with that sort of nice wicker like um, texture or anything a little bit thicker than the final fabric that you're using just as a nice contrast. 
I think when I made the um, sink baskets I did say that these baskets can also be made in any size to go in any room. Once you know the technique it's a really handy little item to make. Make them sort of under bed storage baskets, make them to go on top of the wardrobe in a child's playroom, in an attic. There's so many things you can do with them and obviously so many different um, fabric combinations or you could use the cord if you wanted to as I did with the kitchen sink but you just need to make your baskets um, a little bit narrower if you used um, the plait around the edge because it just makes them a little bit wider so just make sure you've got enough clearance for the baskets to um, sort of slide into the openings Let's pop those into place and then again because they don't go fully back I'm going to cut a um, piece of wood as we did for the drawers to make the drawer stops in there just so that they don't slide back like that so you would just push it back take the measurement cut a piece of wood that size and then glue it into place at the back and then you can just pop a little bit of paint over that as well We're now ready to attach the unit top piece and make sure you take the drawers out before doing that. It may be that you'll find they need a little bit more sanding um, once the top piece is in place and if you leave them in there they'll get stuck in there. So apply glue to the top areas of the unit. your top piece so the back is flush with the back of the unit and you can do that just by feeling along those back legs with your fingers and so there's an even overhang at each side and you'll probably have about a millimeter hanging over at each side press it all down I'm just going to remove that excess glue And I've got a bit of low tack masking tape here, which I'm going to use to hold that into place. So pull it nice and tightly. Piece across the back there. Oops. I'm going to put another piece across this front. And then I've got some shorter pieces here that I just want to put right over the top just to hold it to the draw divide and then to either side as well like that. and like I say this is low tack but if it does remove any of the wood dye um, when you remove it then you can just touch that in but it shouldn't do okay that can now be left to dry the drawers were a little bit tight when I came to put them back in, so they've both been sanded on the top and bottom. Just sand a little bit at a time, try them again and sand a bit more if you need to. You don't want to sand too much away and have it so that you've created a gap at the top or bottom. And then I'm just going to finish this off with a coat of clear wax and this is actually shoe polish. And I'm just using a little bit of kitchen towel to apply it. You don't want much. And try not to get this onto the paint of the unix, it's quite hard to get off. And I'm just rubbing that into the top in small circular motions. And then once you've applied that evenly, just use a clean piece of your kitchen towel and then you can just buff that off. And you'll find that that just gives the top a really lovely rich finish and you can really see the grain in the wood as well. You can use um, furniture wax if you don't have clear shoe polish. That makes it smell really nice as well. And there is the completed piece. 
I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do, as there's lots more to come. If you'd like to be notified whenever I upload a video, hit the notification bell below. If you enjoy making your own doll's house furniture and miniatures, you might like my books. I've published four of them so far, and they're all available to purchase from Amazon. Just search for Julie Warren. And for now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.